got a smaller crowd, so I'm going to pass these around. Everyone can take one. It's, it's something I'll get to eventually, something that happens in the Twin Cities. Jesus. Mm. Let's just take a, uh, a little bit of time and wait on the Lord. So why don't you just go ahead and um, put yourself in a, in a way to receive, whether hands out or whatever is comfortable to you. We just want to wait on the Lord, wait on his presence to come. So, Lord, we invite you. God, we, we have a lot of things, Lord, to think about, a lot of things on our minds. Lord, we just want to put the distractions off right now. Lord, even our phones, we can even throw our phones away for a little bit. And Lord, we want to dial in with you. We want to connect with you. God, we want to welcome you right now. Lord, in our hearts, Lord, in our souls, in our mind, our will, and emotions, Lord, we wait on you, oh God. We wait on you. We look to you, oh God. Lord, we just lay down every burden. We lay down everything that would trouble our hearts. God, we are asking that we would hear your voice. We welcome your love. We welcome your fire. We welcome your faith, God. We welcome you to come and just crush every limitation, every unbelief, every fear. God, we give you every battle. Lord, every one of us, the enemies battling us in one way or another, us or a loved one or whatever. God, we just lay it all down at your feet. We just welcome your wonderful presence, Lord. We want this room to be a room of encounter, Lord. We want our hearts to be a landing strip where you can come and dwell, where you can come and speak, where you can come and just empower where you can come and stir, where you can come and deliver, where you can come and equip, you can come and empower, you can come and give us boldness. Oh, Jesus, we love your presence. We say that your nearness is our good. Lord, no other fount we can drink from can satisfy us. No other love is better than your love, God. Your love is better than wine. Your love is better than life. Just go ahead, just begin to just talk to God in your own language. Just begin to just love him. Just begin to praise him. Lord, we love you. We love your nearness. We love your purity. God, you're so pure. You're so humble. You're so innocent, Lord. We love your innocence. Though our flesh it tries to go its own way, we thank you that we're crucified with Christ and you've made us a new creation. Lord, we just love to fellowship with you. We love communion with you. We love friendship with you. Oh, God Almighty, we say we love you more than any others, more than any other lover. We love you. We love you more than any other desire, more than any other passion, God. Just begin to just talk to God. Stir up your hunger. Just, just long for him in your hearts. Lord, more than any other thing, Lord, everything else is broken cisterns. God, we ask that you would break our broken cisterns. Lord, you said in Jeremiah that we've, we've forged, we've forsooken you. And because we've forsooken you, we've, we've forged these cisterns that can't hold water these broken cisterns. Lord, we ask that you would come and break the broken cisterns. Lord, break these broken cisterns, Lord, and we want to drink from your well. We want to drink from the depths of God. We want to drink, Lord. God, we're asking that you would deliver us from outer courts Christianity. We're asking that you would deliver us, Lord, from nominal Christianity. 
And Lord, we're asking that you would rise up a church that would go into the Holy of Holies. Lord, rise up a church that would carry your glory, Lord God. Rise up a bride that would be wholehearted, Lord. Lord, not in obligation or legalism or this or that, but we're asking out of a lovesick passion, out of a fascination, out of a belief that you are who you say you are and that you can satisfy more than anything else. Lord, you said in Isaiah 55, you said, if anyone is thirsty, come to the waters and drink. Ho, let your soul delight itself in abundance. God, we're asking, Lord, that there just be a desire for you. And, Lord, we just put aside every offense, every wound, every unbelief, every issue, and we just forge forward with our whole heart, and we say, here we are. We're yours. Let's just lift our hands and say, here we are, oh, God. I'm yours. I'm yours, God. I'm fully yours. Just like a a, a virgin bride being married to a a bridegroom, that innocent love, that wholehearted, pure love. Lord, we want to be like that, Lord. We want to be in love with you. Lord, we're so sorry where we've made it about religion. We're so sorry where we've made it about whatever else. And Lord, we return to our first love. We return back. We return back to you. So come and breathe on our hearts right now, God. So come and breathe on our hearts, God. Every area of our hearts have been dead. Every area of our hearts have been hardened. Lord, we lay our hearts at your altar. We lay our lives before you. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The struggles, the sins, the mindsets, everything, Lord. We're asking that we would be a living sacrifice. We want our lives, oh God. We want our lives, oh God, to be a sacrifice. Living sacrifice. Continually. Lord, in any area where we've crawled off of the altar, in any area where we've we've pulled ourselves away from that, being crucified with Christ, we ask that we would give you our everything. And I believe in this session, people who have lost hope are going to regain their hope. Some of you have completely lost hope. God's going to breathe on your hope again. Something is going to spark alive. Some of you have lost faith. Some of you have lost. And God's just going to come in and reignite. He's going to reignite your hope. He's going to reignite your heart. He's going to renew you. He's going to restore you. He's going to light a new fire in you. And you're going to be... God, I pray that everyone in this room would leave a different human being. That they would, that we pray, God, I pray that they would never be the same. That after the session, oh, God Almighty, they would never be the same. Transformation. That this session right here would be a turning point in their faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Don't you love prayer? Yeah. Just connects you to God, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like a, that's just a little preview of my prayer life, you know, like every day. It's just, just go before the Lord and just do heart business, you know? And whatever it is, whatever's in the way between me and my beloved God, me and God Almighty, who's perfect love. Whatever's in the way, you just do that heart business with them and you get it back on the altar. You get it back. Anything that's crawled off of the place of sacrifice, you just put it back on. You say, here it is, sacrifice of love. (sighs) 
Hallelujah. So my session here, um, I am going to get into power evangelism. I know you're really excited for that, but I've got some segues in before I really hit that, okay? So stick with me. Um, we're just going to go. I've got like an hour and a half or something, right? Is it two right now? Is that the time here? It's two. Okay, good. So I've got like an hour and a half to two hours-ish, but um, I, I have something, man, I'm like on like no sleep. Like last night, I got like three hours of sleep. Oh boy, seriously, like oh, so excited for what God's doing. Like I am so just like buzzing. Like David Bradshaw, like unfolded like what God's doing, what God's been speaking to him. This is stuff I've been sitting on for over a decade. The stuff that that he's releasing that God said to them. And I'm not like super good friends with him yet. I'm, we're growing closer to closer and closer because I'm I'm on staff with Awaken the Dawn. Like I work with them. I work with a lot of movements around the world. But as I'm hearing him talk and just release what God has said, it's like the same exact stuff. It's just like I'm so excited. I'm just freaking out on the inside, and it's gonna come out in the session. Like so, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. But I just want to let you know a little bit about myself. Uh, I look I look 23. But I'm actually 33. Hey. <laughs> My mama gave me a baby face. Amen. So I've been in the missions and prayer movement for around 15 years. Um, actually, I've been saved. You know, I was walking with the Lord even from my youth, but uh, just kind of fell away and got into the world. And then God called me back, and it just like everything just hit the fan. And he just brought me to a place where, he, you know, it's one thing to say you're a Christian and then go and play around with the world, and it's, an, it's another thing to, like, take up your cross, you know what I mean? It was about 15 years ago, God brought me to the place where I was like, I'm done with the world. I tasted the world. I went and I rebelled, and I tasted the world, and I found out it was poison, and I found out it was absolutely disgusting, and so I just vomited out the world, and I said, God, give me the cross. I want you. I don't want this world. I want to take up my cross and follow you. I want to be wholehearted for you, amen? And so, like, right out the gate, he just lit me on fire. Like, right out the gate, like, started hearing his voice. Yes, I hear voices, and I like it. It's the voice of my Father in heaven, and he speaks, and it's wonderful. And he tells you things, you know? And, and so right out the gate, God just began to speak to me, and I just began to evangelize right out the gate, just preach the gospel right out the gate, right out the gate, right out the gate, and just like, oh, I was on fire, you know? And you got to protect that fire. When you're burning for God, you got to protect it, amen? You got to savor it. You know, once you get the fire of God burning in your life, it's like getting a bonfire going, you know? You got to shelter that thing and fuel that thing and keep it burning, and I'm telling you, out of all the things we can burn for in this life, there's nothing more fascinating than burning for God. And he burns for us. You know, this Christianity isn't a bunch of religious do's and don'ts and this and that. The, the primary paradigm that God uses to explain this Christian faith is a bride and a bridegroom. He's the burning bridegroom. Amen. If you ever see a healthy marriage, I love Jeff, Jeff and Autumn. I just, I just look at their marriage, and I'm just like, These, this, is, this is a cute couple, man. I'm like, this is the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in love. You're supposed to just, like, radiate beauty and honor and, like, healthy and, like, oh. I just see their marriage, and I'm just like, this is amazing. I'm like, this is the design of God. God wants us to be a radiant bride, and he's a burning bridegroom. He wants us to have a healthy relationship. A happy, you can tell these two are happily married. You can look at them. You look at Jeff and Autumn. They're happily married. They're actually better off being married than they are apart. Amen? And that's our relationship with God. Our relationship, this faith, is, it's, 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 a, it's a burning passion. It isn't a dead religion. Amen? And when our hearts get awakened to that love, when our hearts get awakened to the revelation that God's called us not to a religion, but he's called us to a passionate relationship, it's fascinating. I had a youth I was working with. I'm going into stories already. I had a youth I was working with, and this gal, man, she'd been through everything. She'd been molested. She'd been raped, just super, super beat down. And uh, she started getting to relationships with guys and God knew that the enemy was just going to break her heart through some bad boy. And, and uh, 
I just love this little girl so much. She's like a daughter to me. And uh, one day I could tell she's kind of having a crush on this guy and, and all this stuff. And so she asked me what I thought about it. I'm like, well, you know, focus on Jesus. I mean, it could be, but, you know, be careful. And so one day we were in a prayer meeting and, and the Holy Spirit fell. Just the glory of God fell. And this little girl, like, she fell on the ground and started, like, twitching. She wasn't slain in the spirit. She went out in a trance and started having a vision. And when she went out and, and, and she went out in this trance and, and had this vision, like I could tell, she was like in a spiritual experience, okay? Some of this is scary to you, but this is Christianity. This is the Bible. Read the prophets. Read the book of Revelation. You know, like, I think it's like something like a quarter or more of the Bible is straight visions and dreams. Like if you look at all the, I mean, the, the Bible is very visual. It's a lot of visions. It's a lot of encounters. It's a lot of dreams. This is normal faith. This is a normal walk with God. This shouldn't be scary. This should be our bread and butter. Amen? Within a biblical context. Amen? We're not getting off on some weird whatevers, you know? We're, we're, we're plumb lining this thing to the word of God. Amen? At least we become a bunch of yahoos. I don't want to be a yahoo. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be a yahoo. So, this little girl, who I love, love her so much, she came out of cutting and suicide and all that stuff, and God just delivered her. She's happily married now, and she's got a godly marriage and all this stuff. And so anyways, ah, she falls into this vision. She knew, God knew she had a crush on a bad boy that was going to break her heart. And it's not her, it's not her husband now, but this, this dude at this time. And so God takes her into this vision, and she says, I, she, I watched her, she's twitching, and when she came back, she was like in a little ball, and she's going, hee, 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 What's happening? And she said, she said, Josh, she said, I went out of my body and I went before this throne and there is this burning bridegroom. There's this fascinating, beautiful it's Jesus. Oh, and she said, I went before this, this glorious man who is Jesus. And she said, he reached into my heart and grabbed my heart, not the bum, 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 bum heart the essence of who she is. He reached in and grabbed her heart and pulled it and pulled it in and then covered it and looks her right in the eyes with burning eyes of compassion and love, looks her right in the eyes and says this, no man in the flesh can ever love you the way I love you. Perfect love. And then drops her back down into her body. And here she is on a little ball going, he, 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 he. That's what God's called us into. That's the relationship God's called us into. And God knew that this, this guy would break her heart or whatever. And he knew that he was the perfect lover of her soul. And that's what God's calling this final generation into. Yeah, there's a war and there's a battle and there's Christian disciplines and there's this and that. But more than anything, God's calling us into love. And really, the, the key to power evangelism is love, is being connected to his love. If you're connected to the source of love, you can't help but leak it everywhere you go. It just comes out. You can't help. It's just oops moments. You know, I've had, I've come from just being in the presence of God, then I'm at Subway, and like I have these oops moments where it's like all of a sudden the guy's getting born again. And I'm like, and I'm messing with the guy. I'm just joking with, but he can feel the presence of God on me, man. I had this kid, he was a Mormon. I'm at Subway, and I'm just talking to him, and the presence of God's on me. I'm just messing with him. I'm cracking jokes with him. But he just like, he just stopped. Like once the, the line was done, he came up to me, and he just started talking to me. He's like, man, I just got to talk to you. What is it about you? And I gave him Jesus. And right there, this Mormon kid gets born again, gets touched. You know, life of addiction, God just nails him right there. And it wasn't, I didn't even, it wasn't anything I said. It's just, I was just so tapped in. Every one of us carries a, an essence, an aroma, a presence. And the presence of God just touched this young man. It's simple. The key to evangelism is God, is abiding in his love. It's abiding with him, amen? I'm still on my introduction, believe it or not. I'm getting distracted. 
So basically, I travel all around the world as a missionary. I'm like uh, David Bradshaw was saying, he's like a spiritual tourist. I'm like, I'm stealing that. I'm like, this is what I am. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual tourist. Like, I go, I go to revivals all around the world, and I just see where God's moving in power. And uh, God has me go, and then I catch it, and then I release what I've learned in the other nations, and then they impart into me, and then I go on to the next place. And I just, I just cross-pollinate, you know? There's some flowers that won't bloom unless they're cross-pollinated, amen? And so that's my life. I'm continually on the go and from place to place and, and seeing where God's on the move. And, and I love it, you know? And more than I am anything else, first and foremost, I'm a worshiper and lover of God. I don't need any other title. That's all I need. I'm a lover. I'm lovesick. I'm fascinated. Like, I'm locked in with him, you know? And so, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, I live on a missions base that's really crazy. I live on a missions base that took over one of the worst crack neighborhoods in St. Paul, Minnesota, one of the worst neighborhoods in Minnesota. And after seven years of, of fasting and seeking the Lord and just asking God to invade this neighborhood, which was like one of the worst on the crime maps, even the police were afraid of this neighborhood. Domino's delivery trucks, wouldn't, they wouldn't come to this neighborhood because it's so bad. It's a neighborhood called Godtown. Check it out, godtown.com. It's actually a really cool community. And so after seven years of this, after seven years of this, complete transformation has hit. When we, when we started, it was 40% of the houses were abandoned drug houses. Now it's down to less than 1%. Um, there was a witchcraft store on our block. We anointed it with oil, prayed for it. It shut down. We took it over, and it's now a missionary training base where we train international missionaries. There was a, there was a, um, a, a drug bar right on our block and prayed for it, whatever. We took it over, blah, 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 and now it's our house of prayer. So the drinking spot for the enemy is now the drinking spot in the living waters, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, and just crazy transformation. Kids couldn't play on the streets. They were afraid because of the gangs and because of this or that. Shootings every night. You know, Johnny is my friend. We were, we were worshiping last night. He's in the back holding the camera. Hopefully his arm doesn't get too sore. Two hours, bro. <laughs> but anyways, uh, he lives there, and every night there was shots. The, the, uh, when the founders got there, their daughter was threatened with an AK or a gun or something like that. The first night was threatened to be shot. The very first night, and they're like, well, wow, this is great. But God sent them in, amen? And after complete transformation, Domino's trucks come in. It went from like a red to a yellow on the crime map. Kids playing the streets. Like, I've man, even since I've been there, like, there used to be alcohol bottles everywhere. It's so much less. And it's the kingdom of God is on this neighborhood, amen? And so that's like, that's the base I live at. And it's like really fascinating. And really living, uh, you know, I go, I go all over. I go, I go, I go, I go, I go. But I live in a mission. Like, your guys, like, seriously, right out this door is a mission field, amen? amen. Right out this very door. You know, I, my favorite mission field on, you know, if you're a miss, missionologist or if you're into missions, my favorite mission field out there is, is called Your Backyard. It's a country called Your Backyard. <laughs> Let me break that down for you in the Greek. It's Your Backyard. It's in the 1040 window, right in there, the 1040 window. Most unreached people groups, here's the reality. Age 25 and under, only 4% of Americans are Bible-believing Christians. This is a post-Christian nation. If we don't see a great awakening in this nation, this nation's toast. And it's up to us. And we need to get activated, right? We need to get activated to see that awakening come. And I believe it's coming. You know, all the prophets have been talking about the tidal waves and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the, and the third great awakening. It's coming, but God wants to equip us. God wants to connect us is really the thing. And if you're really connected, the fruit's just going to come. Amen? Hallelujah. So, before I get into um, power evangelism, I want to talk a little bit about how I got in with Awaken the Dawn. So I'm a regional ambassador with Awaken the Dawn, and that region consists of your guys' state. So it's uh, South Dakota, Minnesota, North Dakota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, Wyoming, Montana, and Hawaii, right? So there's it's region four. So I'm like the ambassador, the guy that just like, I don't know, stirs the fire and connects and all that good stuff. So, but uh, I want to I wanna share the story, and uh, the pictures will come up soon. I'll, I'll let you know. Thank you so much. Hey, she's so nice back there. 
I just, I just love joyful volunteers, amen? And so uh, I want to tell you how I, got in, how I got connected to Awaken the Dawn and why I am. Like, there's, there's a reason why. It's because God's behind it, amen? So I was on my, one of my little missionary journeys. So right when this session's done, I'm getting in a car, and I'm going to drive all the way back to Minnesota, go to bed, wake up at 4 a.m., and then I'm off to Israel. And I go from Israel, I go to uh, Uganda, and then I'm in Uganda, and I go to Kenya, and I come back. That's my life. Just pew, 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 nation, 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 go, 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 right? And so that's, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I was on one of these journeys last year, the same time last year, right? And I heard a little bit about Awaken the Dawn, but not all the way. And, um, and, and when, I, when I was on this trip, I was on a trip to Israel. I don't watch TV. I don't watch movies or anything like that. And I'm really, I just live a life. I try to live a life before the Lord. But the Holy Spirit told me, he said, he said, Josh, he said, turn on your little TV. Have you guys ever been on a flight and you see those little TVs, right? Yeah, you guys are familiar with that. So I was on this flight and, and the Holy Spirit's like, hey, Josh, turn on your TV. I want to show you something. I'm like, okay, God, I hate TV, but I'll do it. So uh, I turn it on. And when I, when I turn on the TV, he's like, I want you to look for this thing called Tomorrowland, which I had heard about. And so I look, I look for this thing. Raise your hand if you ever heard of Tomorrowland. Do you know what Tomorrowland is? Okay. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll unpack it for you. Okay. Ah, okay. Ah, the emotions of God are so intense, man. <laughs> like, you know, women's emotions are intense. Are they not intense? They're intense, aren't they? Yeah. God's emotions are even more intense, man. His emotions. Like, if you're a friend of God... Like, as an intercessor, you're all in the prayer movement, right? You love to just spend hours and hours at the feet of Jesus. Well, you begin to feel his heart. You begin to carry his burdens. You know, the prophets in the Bible, it says, the burden of the word of the Lord came to so-and-so. The burden of the word of the Lord came to so-and-so. Here's the thing about the, the, the worship and prayer movement is when you're communion with him night and day and you're fellowshipping with him night and day, you begin to feel his emotions. And his emotions are powerful, man. I'm telling you, they're just... Being a friend of God, being a prophet, like carrying the heartbeat of God, it's an intense thing. It's like, it overwhelms me, man. I'm just like, and his emotions are never unrighteous. They're always righteous. They're always pure. They're always true. They're always right. I'm never like, God, what's your problem? It's usually me repenting for my problems, amen? Like, God, my, my mindset's like, he's righteous. He's holy. He's true. He's just. He's God. He's awesome, amen? I love him. I love God. I just love his ways, even though it challenges me all the time in my stupidity. Amen? So I'm on this flight, and God's like, turn on the thing. And he's like, take a look at it. And, and he says, pull up Tomorrowland. Can you put that first picture of, like, that crowd? He says, pull up this video. And if, 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 I, if I could, I'd, I'd pull up a video, but it's kind of hard. So he says, pull up this thing on Tomorrowland, and I'm on the flight. And I'm just in intercession with God on the flight, and I'm praying, and he's showing, he's like, when you're a friend with someone, you share, their, you share emotions, you share dreams, you share secrets, you share burdens, right? When you confide with a friend, you share the innermost secrets of your heart with them, right? And when you're a friend with God, he's going to share his secrets with you. He reveals his mysteries to his servants, the prophets. He reveals what's on his heart to his friends. And that's the thing about the prayer movement is when you're ministering to him in the priestly the prophetic is just right there amen so i'm on this flight and i'm looking at this thing and uh oh man and i'm sitting there and i'm just like oh i'm groaning and i'm like i'm like god what are you showing me and he's like do you see the the worship in the nations do you see the worship in the nations can you go to the next slide okay we're getting somewhere okay go back to the other one uh, can you go back to, thank you. Okay. Ah, Jesus. And he's showing me this last day's demonic worship movement. These, the, this Tomorrowland gathers all the nations. Do you see all the nations here? Do you see all the flags, all the nations? They all gather. It's an it's a EDM festival, electronic dance music festival that gathers hundreds of thousands of people. When they put their tickets online to sell for this, they sell two to 300,000 tickets in 30 minutes. Bam. Just like that. And it's all about psychedelic drugs. This is like the hippie movement. This is like Woodstock on crack. Serious. And it's sweeping the nations right now. It's this demonic worship movement. And, 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 
and people gather. And once after 30 minutes, there's hundreds of thousands of people waiting to get in. I mean, it's just this flock of the nations. And, and the music is all electrical. It's all dancing. And it's all drugs. And it's all sex, man. It's just crazy flesh stuff, right? And uh, it's a demonic worship movement. This is the last day's worship movement for the devil. And I sat there with God. I'm like, God, why are you having me like think about this? You know, just the mystery, just following the leadership of the Holy Spirit, you know, where he takes you. And my, uh, my heart began to groan. My heart began to grip. My heart began to just, I could feel the emotions of God. And I said, God, and when you look at the fruit that comes out of these things, and I'm not saying some of that music, like I'm not necessarily against that music. It's just what follows the music. The death that comes, the suicide that comes, the depression that comes, the darkness that comes, the broken families that come, the robbed purity that comes, the defilement that comes, the just, just, the just all the demonic attacks that come when you follow a worship movement like this. And in my heart, my heart was groaning for my generation. And, I'm, and I was sitting there, I said, God, I want to see this for you. I'm in intercession, I'm saying, God, this the enemy is hijacking your praises, these nations. All the nations gather. The nation's worship belongs to you. And it's like David had this thing in his heart that he was zealous, that he would not sleep until he found a resting place for the Lord. Why? He was a lovesick worshiper. And he knew the praises belongs to God and not to the devil. And when you're in the worship and prayer movement, and when you spend your time before the Lord night and day, day and night, your greatest joy is to see your generation, is to see your, is to see your nation bow before the King of glory. Amen? And when you see the enemy take God's praises, you get jealous. Ah, you feel it? You feel a burning in your heart. In your heart, you say, this belongs to my King. This does not belong to a demon that's going to steal, kill, and destroy and lead a generation to hell. This worship belongs to a king who humbled himself and shed his blood. He emptied himself of everything he had and became a servant and died on a cross. He is the worthy one. He's the only one that is resurrected from the dead. He's the only one that has manifested perfect love. He's the only one worthy. In heaven and earth, there's only one found worthy of the praise. And that's our God. Amen? Doesn't belong to any musician. Doesn't belong to any pop star. Doesn't belong to any this, any movie star, any that. It belongs to Jesus. Amen? He's the king of heaven. He is worthy of hearts on fire. Amen? Yeah, and so I sat there, and I was just on this flight, and I was burdened, and I'm going, God, this belongs to you. God, this belongs to you. And I'm like, God, why are you showing me this? And he's just like, you know, God pops like a, a prophetic seed in you, and it just sprouts, you know? It's just like, bloop. And then it just begins to grow, the word of the Lord, amen? And so I'm sitting on this, and I'm like, I'm like God, I want to see, see 300,000 people flock to you in a day. I want to see the nations run before your throne, God. I want to see the nations gather in the multitudes before your glory, oh God. Oh, it belongs to you. Where is this, God? You are worthy, God. You're better than any drug. Your presence, in your presence. Psalm 1611. David, the psalmist, a lovesick worshiper, said it himself. In God's presence is the fullness of joy, and at his right hand are ever-increasing pleasures. EDM, electronic drugs, all that stuff, designer drugs, has nothing on the presence of God. I came out of drugs. Nothing compares to the glory of my king. You know, why, do, why am I in the prayer movement? Why am I worshiping, praying night and day, day and night? Why am I in this thing? I'm lovesick. I love his presence. His love is better than wine. Amen? Yep. Hallelujah. His love, his presence is better than any worldly pleasure. It's the pleasure beyond all pleasures, man. I'm telling you. And I'm lovesick. And that's why I'm hooked into this thing. Amen? So, I, I'm in <laughs> I'm in Israel. I've been, God's put a seed in me. And I'm sitting there and I'm groaning. And God sends me to Uganda. I wasn't planning on going to Uganda. It's a crazy story. I don't have time to tell it. But basically, I'm talking to two older ladies that are begging me to go to Uganda with them. 
And uh, I said, I, I can't go, my schedule. And they're like, Josh, please, would you come? We want, you know, they're like 50s and 60s, you know, whatever. Like, please come. We, th- we just need a younger man to come. We've never been to Uganda. I'm like starting to have compassion. I'm like, ugh. I'm like, you're going to Uganda. You don't know your contacts. And I'm like, I'm a missionary. I know how this works, man. Things get crazy. If you go to a foreign country like this and you don't know the ropes, you get in trouble real quick. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, gosh. And I was just in Uganda three months before, and I was just there, and uh, I had my shorts on, the same shorts I had on from when I was in Uganda before. And I'm sitting there, I'm talking to these ladies, and they're like, please come. And they're like, I'm like, well, what church are you going to? And they're like, well, we're going to this one church, this Glory Church International. And I'm talking to these ladies, and I'm like, oh, my like, God, can I do this? Do I have the money? Can I pull this off? And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, man, do I go, God? And I'm like, what are you doing? You know? And they're like, please come, Josh, please. And I'm like, it's like, you girls, you're in trouble. If you don't know what you're doing, I'm like, oh. If you know anything about Africa, Mazungus, man, they just they see white people, and they flock to them. Sometimes it's good stuff. Sometimes it's bad stuff, but it's a lot of pressure, you know? And I'm talking to them, and I pull out a piece of paper out of my pocket. All right, I pull my phone out of my pocket, and there's a piece of paper stuck to it. Three months before, a young man had come up to me, and he said, Josh, gives me a piece of paper. He says, Josh, he says, I want you to come to my church. Here's the name of my church, Glory Church International. Here's the city, Kampala, Uganda. And so I was talking to these ladies, and I said, ladies, what church are you going to? What's your contact? And they said, well, we're going to Glory Church International in Kampala, Uganda. I reached to grab my phone to, like, check, maybe check my schedule, check whatever, and I have a piece of paper attached to it that was in my pocket from three months before, and I look at the piece of paper, and the piece of paper says, Glory Church International, Kampala, Uganda. And I look at this piece of paper, and I look at these ladies, and I say, oh, hey, you can have your piece of paper back, because I thought they'd handed it to me. And they said, we didn't give you a piece of paper. And I'm like, where did this come from? And my mind goes to that young man that came up to me when I was under the tree, gave me the piece of paper. Do, 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 do. Bam. I looked at him and I just sat there and I freaked out and I said, I'm going to, I'm going to Uganda. I'll be there. So I went to Uganda. It was an amazing, God had amazing things to do. He wanted to show me in Uganda, they do all night prayer On a Friday night, they have all-night prayer. Within the city center, they have like 100 locations that do all-night prayer. So just like the Americans go to church every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. In Uganda, they go to church every Friday, every Friday, every Friday, and they pray through the night. And their prayers are fire. Those people will pray through the night. I mean, is Elizabeth in here? I don't know if it, yeah. So we have a friend that comes to her house of prayer. She has a house of prayer at the University of Minnesota. This is my sis. Elizabeth, we've been working together for years, 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 and uh, she's got this guy that comes from Nigeria, man. All the Americans, I got a picture, where's Johnny? Did he give up? Oh, there he is in the back, great. So, so I got a picture of Johnny like sleeping on the row, and then I've got a, a video of Johnny sleeping on the front row. Meanwhile, you've got this Nigerian guy the whole night. And, uh, and I go, okay. Here's the, the difference. I'm not picking. Johnny can pray. Like, this dude's like, he's been at this for years, so I'm not picking on him. It could have been me passed out. But I'm like, here's the difference between the American prayer movement and the African prayer movement. I video of Johnny. <laughs> and then video of this guy. The whole night doesn't blink once. We need to learn from the Africans. We need their fire, amen. And that's why I'm going there this month. I'll be there. I'll be in Uganda and Kenya. I go to learn. I don't go to... Sometimes you receive and sometimes you give. I learn a lot from my African brothers and sisters. Man, they got the fire of prayer on their lives. And man, they pull down strongholds like you wouldn't believe. Amen. So I'm in Uganda. I know I'm like, God showed me why he took me there. He wanted to show me their all-night prayer movement. And when I came back and I began to ignite all-night prayer all over my city, I began to encourage it all-night prayer with outreaches. Don't just do prayer. Outreaches too. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. The last day's wine skin, all night, like continual prayer and continual evangelism and continual family. Oh, another message, another message for another time. <laughs> continual prayer and worship, continual evangelism that goes into creating continual family and community. Amen. That's the last day's church right there. That's the last day's triumphant church that God's rising up, amen? That's the wineskin that's going to bring in the third great awakening and, I believe, the final harvest, which hopefully I'll get into in a little bit. The fi- Turn to your neighbor and say, the final harvest. Oh, turn to your other neighbor and say, the final outpouring. The final outpouring. <laughs> 
the final outpouring. That's what we're getting into. So I'm in Uganda, and I'm on the plane in Uganda, and I'm still just burdened in prayer. God puts something in my heart, and I can't shake it. Raise your hand if you've ever been there. Welcome to being a friend of God. Amen. Isn't it fun? And it's just like, when it's in there, it's just like, oh, you got to intercede until you burst the thing. Amen. Ah. Amen. So I'm sitting there, and the Lord speaks to me with his whispers. And I'm, man, I'm like, I just had, uh, I had gotten sick. I was like, just coming off of something hit me. Oh, man, it was, like, nasty. And so I'm, like, I'm jet-lagged. I'm, like, I'm exhausted. I just got done with a month marathon. I'm tired. And I'm just, like, trying to listen to the Spirit. My flesh is screaming, you know, I'm just sore, tired, sick. Ah. But the Holy Spirit's talking to me. And he says, Joshua, he says, this desire that you're looking for in your generation to worship me, this desire, he told me, he says, you're going to find it in Awaken the Dawn. And he says, and I didn't know Awaken the Dawn. I didn't know the whole story. I heard of it a little bit, just a little bit. I just heard of it just a little bit. And he told me, he says, he says what, you're, what you're groaning for, the very beginnings of it, this desire to see your generation worship me in the masses, not for the sake of, wow, we want big crowds to make our ego big, but because Jesus is worthy of the heart of a generation. He's worthy of the praises. It does not belong to the devil. He is not worthy. Only Jesus is worthy. No demon, no musician, no one, no politician. Jesus is worthy. Him alone, he's worthy. And so he told me, he says, he says Josh, he said, you're going to find it and awaken the dawn. And I said, yes, Lord. The plane lands. And when the plane lands, my phone goes off. Bloop, 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 bloop. And there's a guy that seven years ago, before that, I got stuck in a snowstorm down in, southern, in, uh, in the southern U.S. Raise your hand if you ever heard of the burn here, the burn movement. Burn 24-7. It's a 24-7 prayer movement. So I got stuck in a house because a snowstorm hit in, in Oklahoma. When does a snowstorm hit in Oklahoma? Never. They were pulling out John Deere tractors to move the snow. It was hilarious. I was like, I've never seen anything like this. This is ridiculous, man. Yeah, so I get stuck in this house with this dude for like three days, and we're forced to like cross-pollinate and like forge a relationship, you know? And he's a director of The Burn 24-7. He's like one of the main directors. He's one of the main guys, David Fritch, great guy. So when I land in Uganda, and I'm just burdening, just God just gave me an answer, and he just like sparked some hope in my heart, and he's like unfolding this prophetic burden, this mystery. I land, and my phone goes off. Bloop, 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 bloop. And guess who it is? David, David Fritch from The Burn. And he messages me, and he says, hey, Josh, he says, would you by chance be interested in becoming an ambassador for Awaken the Dawn? Wow. God just had told me that he's going to start. It's the root. The th- what happened in D.C. with Awaken the Dawn was the very beginning, and God told me that this would start the worship movement. I want to, This would be the very beginnings of the beginnings of it. And right when I land, I'm invited into leadership with this thing. How cool is that? So I want to show you more pictures. Let's go to the next picture of Tomorrowland, please. Tents. Look at that. Tents. This is a, this is a demonic worship movement. Okay, next. Next. Huge crowds, man. I'm talking like the nations, man. It's wild. Okay, next one, please. Okay, this is all over Europe. And they, do, they did one in the U.S., I mean, you can Google it, but it's, I mean, it's pretty nasty. It's like watching, yeah, but just be careful. But it's, it'll stir you saying, this belongs to God. Who knows what that is? Who knows what that one is? Woodstock? That's Woodstock. Hallelujah. Good job, Monica. Hallelujah. Through a worship movement, the enemy was able to get a generation in a tailspin to hell. And the brokenness, you know, as I'm working with these kids that are cutters and suicidal and broken, I can trace it right back to their parents getting into the hippie movement and forsaking the Lord and getting into sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And it's had this nation in a tailspin. These demonic worship movements are out there to lead a generation to hell. 
But where's God? Wherever there's an action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Amen? And the enemy has a game plan for the nations, but God has a game plan for the nations as well, right? And I would like to propose to you that God is releasing, you know, I'm not like, it's not about the name of a ministry. It's about the blueprint that God is releasing from heaven and he trusts, he gives, he entrusts it to people to steward it. Amen? Let's go to the next picture, please. Here's the solution right here. A new day is dawning in America. God is releasing a new movement. And this was at the D.C. National Mall at last September. We're, here we are right here. Uh, next picture, please. That one's a little blurry. Next picture, please. 58 tents. Next picture, please. There it is. Tent, tent, tent. Do you see that? Tent, 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 tent. Those are all state tents burning 24-7 for three days. Next picture, please. Next picture, please. Oh, come on. Yeah. This, is, this happened after. All this stuff I just, this happened after. This, this is what came after that encounter with the Lord. Amen. God summoned. You know, and if you guys are living for God and worshiping God and seeking God, he's going to summon you into his purposes. It's the way it works. The key to missions starts with the priestly. You know, David talked about everything comes from the priestly function. First, we are priests and ministers to God. And then from there, the prophetic comes. He shares his burdens with us. Amen? And then that, from there, he moves us to be kings and the kingly function to release the kingdom of God. Amen? Priest, prophet, king. Amen? Okay, next picture, please. That's one of the tents. That's like New Hampshire's tent. It was burning. I mean, there's 50 of them on the, on the National Mall. Next picture, please. That's another tent. Next picture, please. Man, come on. We need this in this nation. Amen? Can you see the emotion on that woman's face? Next picture, please. Come on, Jesus. Resurrect a nation. This nation is dead. We need resurrection in this nation. Intercession can resurrect a nation. Do you believe it? Do you believe that intercession can resurrect a nation? Ah. Let's stand and pray right now. Let's do it. Come on. Let's just begin to pray right now. Let's go to the next picture. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's pray right now. Come on. I believe that intercession can resurrect the nation. Do you believe it? Just begin to pray. Just begin to pray. Come on. We're at war. Just begin to pray. Just begin to say, God, I believe. God, we believe. We believe, Lord God, that intercession, intercession can resurrect a nation. God, we believe, Lord, that you can turn back the curse on the land, God. God, we're believing, Lord, for a last day's worship movement that's stronger than Tomorrowland, oh God. God, we're believing for something stronger than Woodstock, oh God. We're believing for something stronger than anything the devil is producing, God. We're asking for a worship movement with signs and wonders, oh God. A prayer movement, Lord, that sweeps the nations, God. That delivers and heals families rather than tearing them apart, oh God. God, we're believing for a movement to capture the youth, God. Instead of the youth being captured by demonic music that's defiling them, God. We ask that the youth would be captured by a heavenly sound. God, we ask for a new sound, a new glory, a new passion, a new presence, Lord. Just begin to cry out. Just begin to cry out. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? You got to birth that thing. How bad do you want it? Jesus, we're asking, Father, for a new day. Lord, we believe a new day is dawning in America. God, we're believing a new day is dawning in South Dakota. God, in South Dakota, we're asking for a worship movement, God, to stir. In South Dakota, we're asking, Lord, for the Midwest. God, we're asking for a new worship movement to stir. We're asking for a new prayer movement to stir. A new worship movement to stir. A new missions movement to stir. Lord, we're asking, Father, that you would kindle the fires of it, Lord God. Stir it, Lord. Stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, Lord God. Lord, we're asking, put your seed in us, Lord, of the word of the Lord. Put your burden, Lord. We want to feel the burdens of your heart, God. We want to see the song of the Lord in the land. God, we ask that the stadiums would be filled with worship, God. The stadiums were made for worship. Lord, not sports team, Lord God. Not rock stars, Lord God. 
Lord, we're asking that the name of Jesus would be lifted in our stadiums, oh God. That you would be worshipped day and night, night and day. Like it is in heaven, God, we pray that it would be on earth. Lord, as it is in heaven, Lord, we ask that it would be on earth, Lord God. Night and day, day and night, Lord, that there would be worship, Lord God. That you would be lifted as the exalted king. She would be exalted in our land, God. You would bring healing in our land, Lord God. As we rid the land of demonic altars. As we rid the land of false worship. As we rid the land of defilement, Lord. We're asking that you would come and heal this land. Stir a movement, Lord. Stir a movement that this world has never seen. Lord, awaken your church. Awaken your bride. Awaken her back to her first love. Hallelujah. Jesus. God, we've seen hell's movement on this nation. We've seen hell's movement. We want to see heavens move, God. We're done with the moves of hell, God. Forgive us of our sin. Forgive us, Lord, of our rebellion and our idolatry and our false worship. And we're asking, stir a violent, holy move from heaven. Just sweeps this nation, sweeps South Dakota, sweeps the Midwest. God, we're asking for a new song, a new melody, a new passion, a revolution of righteousness, God. Rather than a revolution under rebellion, God, we're asking for revolution under righteousness. That you would restore the land, God. You'd restore your people, God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, welcome to Africa Church, because when you're in Africa, the preachers will stop smack dab in the middle of their sessions and go right into intercession, and when they do it, the place goes nuts. Pandemonium. I'm serious. It's like a thousand... It's like a thousand birds taking off at once, and they'll go the whole night. It's wild. I've got videos. Add me on Facebook and pull up my Africa. It's crazy. These people are nuts, man. I feel sorry for the devil. When they pray, it's just like... Whoa. Because the Bible says our prayers are to be fervent. You can, you can be seated. You know what the word fervent means? Violent. Boiling, passionate, the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. That's what the Bible says, amen? Now, part of being awakened is having a burning prayer life, amen? In the secret place, in corporate, it's both. It's, it's in the secret place and in the corporate place, Keeping the fire burning on the altar. We need the fire to burn on the altar in our individual prayer altars. Amen. In our individual prayer lives. And we need the fire burning on this altar, the corporate altar, day and night. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to the next photo. Oh, man, I love it. Next photo. Oh, come on. Rabakasharabakata. Next photo. The dawning of a new day. Amen. Wow, 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 wow. One more, a couple more photos. Okay, check this out. Oh, come on, come on. Sha. Ooh, ha, ooh, ha, ha. <laughs> Next photo. Tent America 2018. This is why I believe in this. I believe it's God. More than, hey, hey, let's push our agenda, our ministry. This is heaven's lifeline to a generation, to a nation. America needs awakening. All the division, all the crisis, all the shootings, all of this, all of that, all the pressure, all the wars and rumors of war. We need awakening. We need an outpouring. Who's going to pray it in like Elijah? Elijah prayed, and it poured. And the rain that fell in 1 Kings, whatever it was, 18, I think I got the right reference. The rain that fell was only a parable of the rain that was falling in the Spirit. He unlocked revival in his nation through prayer and action, prayer and intercession. Amen? And this Awaken the Dawn, I believe it's a lifeline. It's rousing every one of you. God's awakening you as an intercessor. Amen? Oh. Okay. Next picture, please. Oh, come on. That's your state capital. I don't know. That's New Hampshire's, I think. But come on. At your state capital, who's in? Raise your hand if you're in. Go and birth it. Go and birth the next movement. 
God told me, he says, this is the beginnings. Don't think this is the end all. This is the start. This is the root. I am giving this nation a root. I've given them a seed that's into a root that's going to grow into a movement that will sweep. I believe this, this movement's going to sweep. It already is. The U.S. with the kingdom of God, and it's going internationally as well. Amen? Yeah. It's going to be in the nations. It's going to draw the nations to worship. And we're going to see these rallies where thou hundreds of thousands of people will come, not for the sakes of sake of numbers but for the sake of a worthiness of a king ah it doesn't belong to mtv it doesn't belong to this that or the other it belongs to jesus amen ha hallelujah i want to uh david bradshaw said last night he said awaken the dawn tent america is about a billion soul harvest Woo! amen now keep that picture up there i want to read you a spiritual niece of mine she had a uh, her friend had a dream, and I want to share it with you. She's like my little niece. She calls me uncle. Uncle this, uncle that. Uncle, 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 uncle. Isn't it fun? We're in the family of God, amen? We're family. We're not ministry, you know, whatever, whatever it is. We're not in a corporation. This is family, right? This is family, Amen? family so she she sends me a text or a text and she's like she's like josh my friend had the craziest dream you wouldn't believe it i gotta share it with you i gotta this was two years ago so before awaken the dawn was even in the works she had this dream before tent america where if can you go back to the previous slide with tent america thank you uh 50 capitals all at once are going to have 24-7 worship prayer with evangelism all over the nation, all at once, every state capital. There's going to be people there during the Feast of Tabernacles, which is a significant Israel, Israeli holiday in the Bible, biblical Jewish holiday. Amen. Three days straight. Man, your capital, whatever your capital is, get behind this thing. Amen. Ooh. So before this ever happened, okay, go, go to the next slide, please. This girl has this vision. Uh, my, my niece's friend has this vision. She said, I had the craziest dream. I saw the capital of St. Paul, Minnesota on fire. And instead of people running from the fire, right, because if there's like fire in this room, everyone's, Aah! we just, Aah! right? So instead of the people running from the fire, they were running into the fire. Ah. Shalabakata. As they ran into the fire, they came out from all, and as they ran into the fire, so they run, so the fire is in the capital. Instead of people running out, they all run in. And it says, as they run into the fire, then they run out from all directions, starting everything around them on fire. And at the end of the dream, it was on a nationwide newscast because all of St. Paul was on fire. Amen. Now, I propose this. I believe she saw what's going to happen with Awaken the Dawn. And I propose this. This isn't just for St. Paul, Minnesota. That's right. I propose that this is for every one of your capitals. That as you gather, God's going to release a new baptism of fire. Amen. God's going to release. He's going to unlock a new outpouring, a new glory, a new fire, a new passion. Amen. Oh, at the St. Where is your capital in, in South Dakota? Is it Pierre? Okay. Hey, there she is right there. She knows. <laughs> See, I failed my test when I was a kid. So <laughs> I propose that as you gather in that capital in Pierre, that the fire of God's going to fall and that people are going to run into that fire and it's going to go <laughs> and it's going to spread everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has this vision. This isn't a man's vision. He has it, but he's looking for faithful people to steward it. He's looking for faithful people who won't touch the glory, who won't take the credit for it, that will say, Lord, I am just honored that you would entrust me. And it takes every one of you getting behind this thing to make it happen. Amen? Ah. And I really believe that not only is there a third great awakening, but my personal beliefs is we are in a final outpouring. We are in a final harvest. I believe Jesus said, 
they're asking, when are you going to return? Matthew 24, they're saying, Jesus, you know, when are you going to return? When's the sign of your times and all that stuff? And he said, he said, this gospel will be preached to all nations. Then the end will come. And he also says, I think it's in Romans, that it says that the fullness of the Gentiles will come in. That means there will be a harvest in every nation. There will be a final harvest. There will be a final outpouring. Joel 2 says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That girl that had that dream, she's not super spiritual. Actually, she's kind of backslidden, to be honest. But God showed her something. Why? Because God says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. We interrupt your Facebook addiction. We interrupt your TV uh, mesmerism to show you a broadcast from the kingdom of heaven bam getting dreams from God getting visions from God amen and I believe the prayer movement percolates the atmosphere in the heavenlies where angels of God can ascend and descend like tent America it percolates the spiritual climate if you guys don't believe in spiritual climate you just need to read Daniel 7 that dude man there are some strongholds that won't sh shake loose without prayer and fasting there's some things in the heavenlies that won't shift without prayer and fasting. If you don't believe that spiritual climates can be, can't be changed through prayer, I suggest read Daniel 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The whole thing is an intercessor who's praying, and he literally shifts the spiritual climate of his nation through prayer. But Daniel didn't just pray. He went into action, amen? He was, he was second. He was like the main counselor to the king, amen? So he's in the political arena. Daniel didn't just stay in his prayer room and hide in his prayer room and didn't do anything about it. He went right into the political arena and brought the kingdom of God, amen? Hallelujah. Yeah. So God's releasing this, this prayer movement, this, this thing that he's stirring. Man, I really felt like it led that you guys having fun? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I just had to check. It's only fun when you're having fun. Believe it or not, I am getting the power of evangelism. We're getting there. Some of you are like, I want my money back. <laughs> Should have went to the discipleship, dude. Man, this guy. Rah, he spit on me. Ugh. It's all good. We're family, right? So movement because here's the thing the prayer and worship movement i'm getting i'm segmenting now closer to power evangelism the prayer and worship movement will always birth missions the prayer and worship movement will always birth it has to it has to it's impossible for it not if you're tapping into god's heart in prayer and worship it will birth a missions movement amen i'm going to tell you a story I had a group of youth uh, that I was working with and um, just really training them just to like seek the Lord in prayer and worship. And we had the, a season in 2009 where they, they were just coming to my house. I wouldn't even invite them, but they would come to my house. We would worship through the night. And our goal wasn't to like see if we can like get each other healed or prophesy or find like a, a jewel on the floor or anything like that. That stuff's cool. It's fine. But it's not the main focus. Amen. He's the main focus, amen? Knowing him is the main focus, amen? His beauty, his worth is the main focus. That stuff is secondary. He's the fascinating thing. I've seen wild signs and wonders, but nothing touches my heart the way he touches my heart in the secret place. When I'm in his glory, when I'm in his presence, nothing can touch that spot, man. I'm telling you, no ministry advancement, no this, no that, no signs, no wonders, no visions, no this, no blah, 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 but nothing can touch my heart the way he touches my heart in a personal relationship in his presence. Amen? Oh, it's like Moses. Moses begged. Moses, he just begged. He had a taste of the presence of God. And Moses just, you could, you could see this relationship with Moses in the presence of God, this love affair. Moses had a love affair, a holy love affair, a holy love affair with the presence of God. And he, he's told God, he said, he said, please, please, you can hear it in his heart. He's, please. Show me your glory. He was like, God, anything, please show me your glory. Is that the cry of your heart, friend? Is that the cry of your heart? Is that your greatest desire? Lord, show me your glory. I want to be with you where you are. I want to know you. I want to know your affections. I want to know your emotions. I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know your ways. Lord, show me your ways. Lord, show me your ways. 
Ah, God is raising up a generation that is fascinated with the glory of God. We won't, and nothing else will do. Nothing else will satisfy. Nothing else, nothing else can fulfill like his goodness. Amen? He responded to Moses and he said, Surely I will allow my goodness to pass before you. Oh, how wonderful is that? The goodness of God. The goodness of God. And all the hell that's happening in this generation, we need a fresh dose of the goodness of God. And that can only be found in one place, the throne, worship movement, going before his throne into the Holy of Holies, past those outer courts, past the inner courts, and in to throne room. God is releasing throne room worship. God is releasing a throne room generation. God is releasing people that will live, not before their TV set, not before their phone, not before this, not before that. God is releasing a, a, a generation that instead of living before the phone, they're going to live before the throne. Amen? There's a, there's a generation that's going to live for the glory of God. There's a generation that's going to live for his presence. In the midst of all the bad things that are happening, they're going to taste and see that the Lord is good. David said it. David was another one. He was obsessed with the presence of God. He's obsessed with the glory of God. He's obsessed with the goodness of God. He said, surely, surely, he said, goodness and mercy. They're going to follow all the days of my life. And he wasn't talking about three old ladies. Surely, it's my grandma's name, goodness you know, and, and mercy. It wasn't. He was talking about the presence of God, amen? And that's a generation. God is creating a groan in the hearts of his people. And this movement that's stirring in your region. God, than I want anything else, you know? And there's times where I'll give in to, like, whatever, getting zapped out on my phone or whatever, other distractions, you know? And I'm like, man, this just doesn't satisfy. I'm just like, oh, God, I want to break the broken cisterns. Like, Jeremiah, break my, bro break my idols. God, break the idolatry in my life. It's my prayer. I battle it just like you. I'm not better than you. I have the same fight to stay connected to God that any one of you guys have. But that's the cry of my heart. God, deliver me from distractions. Deliver me from lesser lovers. Deliver me from idolatry. Deliver me. Catch me up into heavenly things. God, I want to things. Worldly pleasures. Worldly things. Even things that aren't even, they're nominal. It's not even necessarily a sin. And I want to get caught up into heavenly pleasures. Amen? Ah, a throne room generation's coming forth. So, we had these youth at my house. And they were coming night after night after night after night. And that was their agenda. This is the presence. There's going to be meetings that people aren't going to flock to the meetings because gold dust is showing up. People are getting healed. There's feathers in the atmosphere. Oh, someone saw an angel. <laughs> right? That stuff's cool. I'm not saying it can't happen because I've had those happen in my meetings. It's wild. Right? But here's the thing. There's a generation rising. They're going to gather in the multitudes for the presence of God. It's the tabernacle of David. God's raising a generation. There's a people that are going to arise. There's multitudes that are going to flock to places like this because the presence of God is there. We're coming in a time where 40% of Americans, 30 to 40% of Americans are on some kind of medication for anxiety. Truth. From a doctor friend of mine in Wisconsin. It's coming a day that the only place people are going to find peace is in the presence of God. The only place people are going to find rest for their souls. David said, he's my shepherd. I have no wants. I shall not want. He causes me to lie down. And he restores my soul. There's coming a day that the only place that people will find peace in their hearts is in the presence of God. You can't get it from money. You can't get it from food. You can't get it from sex. You can't get it from drugs. You can't get it from anywhere else. The day is here where, man, I believe multitudes are going to flock into the houses of prayer and worship the king. Amen. Into the churches. Amen. Okay. So time I'm going to try to progress with the story. But I'm building something here. So we're worshiping night after night. These youth are coming. I mean, it was like 10, 11, 12 days in a row, just one after night after night after night after night. And we're just, God, we want you. And we're just like, you get to that point in the presence of God where the glory breaks in and everyone just starts to laugh. And we're just like, oh, his glory's here. Manifest presence is here. Wow, it's so wonderful. There's nothing like it. I've done drugs. There's nothing. There's no sin. Nothing can compare to his goodness. Oh, I'm in love with it. His presence is just, oh, it's everything. Everything, everything, everything. Yeah. I think you get my point, right? So we're on day whatever. 
Night after night after night, youth coming. I'm not even inviting them. They're just showing up. They just know the drill. They know at night, we're going to Josh's, and we're going to worship through the night. On one of these nights, the Holy Spirit falls, and it's strong, strong. Young man comes into my house that had been coming to my ministry, and he was always helping out and always doing different things, and he just had like a really good heart to serve, and you can tell he's really hungry for God, and he'd be the one weeping in the altar, and he's like four months saved. Comes into my house lays down on my carpet, and begins to shake uncontrollably. And I'm like, what, is he in a seizure or something? God's like, no, he's with me. And I'm like, should I try to, like, I've never seen this before. I'm like, should I try to do something? God's like, no, don't touch him. He's with me. Leave him be. He's with me. And I'm like, this is wild. Five hours shaking under the presence of God. Five hours. Five hours later, this young man comes back. And I asked him, what the heck just happened to you, man? And he had this fascinating look on his face, like, whoa, like you wouldn't believe it. And again, I gave him my laptop, and I said, I want you to write down everything you just saw. Write it down. It's baby Christian. Let me read you what he saw. It's everything David Bradshaw has been talking about this weekend, and that's why I've been freaking out. We need a breakthrough, don't we? We need a revolution. We need the greatest of all great awakenings. We need a final outpouring. We need something we've never seen before. The earth is in crisis. We need the latter rains, amen. We need the glory of God to invade our land, amen. amen. Are you with me? Yeah. We need something we've never seen before, more than a Brownsboro, a Pensacola, or a this or a that. I mean, those moves are all great. We need something that's beyond anything we've seen before. This is what he saw. Four months in the Lord said this. This is what he saw in his trance. This kid doesn't know any of the stuff he's prophesying about. He doesn't, it's above his pay grade, right? In the spirit. He doesn't know any of this stuff. He says, the Lord showed me huge crowds of people, like gatherings, like millions of people. And I saw healings taking place and people being raised from the dead. And I saw demons that would shriek and fall away in the presence of God. Then the Holy Spirit spoke to me in the clearest way ever. And he said, this is only the beginning. When he said this to me, he took me into deep thought and was talking about just generation being the time where the ones that would say no to the world, the ones that would say no to TV, the ones that would say no to distractions, the ones that would say no to entertainment, the ones that were wholehearted lovers of God, that they would walk in so much power and that they would have so much authority that they would carry this power everywhere they go and everywhere they went, the power of God would destroy every work of the devil, everything not of God. He gave me a picture of more of the thought of the devil being a little mouse and that these new breeds of wholehearted lovers of God would pounce on him like a cat. He let me feel this power that was coming to the wholehearted lovers of God and showed me things that would happen when I began to walk in this. But he told me that this power would be available to those who are wholehearted lovers of God. Each one of these people I saw being a wholehearted lover of God were like atomic bombs on the earth that wherever they went, heaven would fall and the enemy would get blown away without the slightest of fight. This kid didn't know any of this stuff. But I believe he saw what's coming in, in, a, in an end times revival. It's coming. And I like to propose to you it's here. I've seen it. I've seen little drops of it. I had little teasers of it. It's coming. I'm telling you, I've been through hell with the people that have these encounters. Man, I'm telling you, hell hates what God is going to release. I have battled like you wouldn't believe over the word of the Lord. battled like you wouldn't believe over the word of the Lord in your life. Amen? But it's worth the fight. It's totally worth the fight. The enemy is trying to resist God's move on the planet. But what's the key? What's the key to what God wants to release? What was the key to that whole thing? Wholehearted lovers of God. What's God looking for? Wholehearted lovers. So, power evangelism. Here we go. Are you ready? Should we take a bathroom break? I mean, we almost could. <laughs> uh, 307. We could do that. You seriously want to take a bathroom break? Raise your hand if you want a bathroom break. 
Okay, you, ma'am, are dismissed. We love you. You just come right back. We love you, honey. No, go for it. Here, go for it. It's live stream. Just, if you have to take a break, go for a break. We're going for it here. Okay. We're on like phase two. I wish I could be a preacher, so I can. Ah. Hold it in, mother said when I was a kid. Just hold it. Just hold it. Yes, mom. Yes, mom. It's paying off now. All right. Stand up for a second. We're going to stretch a little bit. We're going into phase two now. So, Lord, we just pray that you just keep us in waves of refreshing, waves of refreshing. Waves of refreshing, Lord. Keep our hearts engaged. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. You ready for round two? Okay, here we go. You may be seated. Now, we're going to roll in the power of evangelism. There's a young girl I worked with who came out of crazy cutting, crazy suicide. I had gone through a really difficult life where I, I really, I walked through the valley of suicide. It was like crazy. The devil was trying to kill me. And I came out of it, and when I came out of it, I had just a really big compassion for the suicidal and for the broken. And I realized a lot of these kids aren't bad kids, the ones that are addicted and cutting and suicidal. I just realized that they have a high destiny on their life, and the devil's trying to destroy them. So when you see these kids that are cutting and suicidal and all punked out and all, don't judge them. you got to realize that there's a destiny behind them that the enemy's resisting. When Jesus went to the Gadarean and he set them free, when Jesus went to the, the man of the Gadareans and he set him free, he became a, 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 an evangelism over Decapolis. This man was by devils like you wouldn't believe, legion, right? And when Jesus set that man free, really what more than just setting him free of demons, he was unlocking his destiny, amen? And these, these ones you see that are super broken, it's not because they're, you know, children of the devil or whatever this or whatever that. It's because the devil is trying to destiny in them and we need to we need to recognize this and love them amen love them to life amen and so i went through it myself so god gave me a real compassion a real tenderness for the broken and uh and so here i am um with this young lady cutting suicidal just like just okay here's her story hangs herself she'd just been raped for like the fourth time molested by you know just life's a living hell her life's a living hell and she had so much of it that, that she goes into a room and she burns her arms up and down, puts her head in a noose, hangs herself to die. She's done. She's too much pain. She's done. She's sitting there dying, suffocating to death. At the last minute, the noose breaks. The mercy of God spares her life. She wakes up with paramedics all around her and gets to the psych ward where they begin to, to work on her psychiatrics and all that stuff. Now, this is stuff I've dealt with this in a lot of cases. This is crazy. This is frontline stuff. I've worked with a lot of kids. I've seen a lot of kids come out of suicide, and I've seen kids that I've reached out to take their lives. I mean, it's, it's hard, man. It's really tough. But you have to stay focused on the victory. For whatever reason, I don't understand. It's hard. When you lose a loved one, the suicide is very hard. It's very, very, very hard. Very, very, very difficult. For whatever reason... Her life was spared. And we began to work with her. She began coming to church, and I just began loving on this. I just put her under my wing like, like, like she'd be my, my daughter. Began loving on her. She received Jesus and began to just, just be transformed. And uh, pretty soon the cutting stopped and the drug stopped. And her, she just went from wearing black and darkness all the time to smiling and, and, and wearing, you know, uh, better clothes, and, and just, you could see a daughter in her out. You could see a bride in her, you know, a bride-to-be, the restoration of a daughter. You could see her dignity being restored. You could see her ashes being turned to beauty, a transformation in her life. Oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And she began, she got found freedom and deliverance, man. I mean, demons coming out of this young lady. I mean, it was wild. I mean, it was, she had every devil in hell 
had its fangs in this young lady. Why? Because her destiny was great. The enemy was trying to resist her destiny, right? And so she gets free, and she has this compassion, and she's like, Josh! She's like, ah. she's like I want to go help the other kids. Those kids all hang. Kids, birds of like feather flock together. All those kids hang out together, you know, all those cutting suicidal. It's like the AA crowd or the NA crowd. They all just like, they all flock together, you know? And she's like, Josh, she's like, I want to, I want to go and I want to reach these kids. And I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take you and we're going to go to spots and we're going to preach the gospel. She said, all right, let's do it. She's nervous. She's like, but let's do it. So we did. This is going to get fun. You ready? You have your seatbelt on? This is about to get really fun. So you have someone, the ones who get free are like dominoes. My greatest keys to evangelism is I find someone that has a crazy testimony and I just spread it throughout the region. I said, look what God's done. to How can you deny there's a God when you have a miracle like this and people get saved left and right? It's like the domino effect. The one gets saved. The man of the Gadareans got saved and it unlocked his whole region. Amen? And you got to look when you're Look for that one. Who, who's the one, God? Who's the one? And you get that one, and it unlocks dozens of people. Amen? Woo! Hallelujah. So this young lady, we go to her drug spots, under the gazebo, you know, by the train tracks, under the bridge, where she used to go and get high on methamphetamines and all these other drugs, right? So I went with her, I took me, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking her with me, and I'm like, we're just going to share the gospel. And... Uh, we go, and, and uh, we're doing it. We're sharing our testimony, and it's going awesome. People are getting touched. And there's this young man there who curses me out. He says, I don't need your blanket. We're under the gazebo. This young man, he's a feisty young man. He's like, I don't need your blankety blank and God. He says, I do drugs. He says, I used, to, I used to go to youth group a little bit. And he's like, whatever. And he's like, I don't need your blankety blank and God. He says, when I do drugs, I see things. And he's like, I don't, he's in the new age and all this weird stuff. He's like, I don't, blah, 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 right? And I'm like, wow, this guy's like super feisty, you know? And I looked at him and I said, I said, man, I tell you what. I said, when I pray, I see things. When I worship, God shows me things. And I said, you've been, you've been bit by religion, but I'm telling you, God is a living God. I said, if you're willing to give up what you have with the devil, God will give you the real and he kind of looked at me, and he was just stunned because he'd never, like, encountered, like, that kind of boldness. He's like, what? So, anyways, um, end of story, we kind of walk away, and I'm like, with Reva, I'm like, that was interesting, man. That guy was really feisty. So, now, Reva, we started doing these Bible studies in, 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 her, in her home, and, I mean, it was just, it was wild. These kids would come cutting. You, you would get... You would get uh, Satanists, you would get drug addicts, you'd get kids that were like literally right on the edge of death. And we'd do it where we'd gather and we'd begin to pray. The Holy Spirit would fall. Demons would just start coming out of kids everywhere. Satanists, witches, it was wild. And at the same time, these kids would start having visions. I mean, it was just crazy outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you know? And uh, this was happening more and more. And I mean, it's just, just, it was messy, you know? It wasn't necessarily pretty. It was messy. It was war. I mean, it was like... It was filled with the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know what I mean? But God was moving and setting people free. And like, man, I'll never forget it. Like, I was out on the streets on this, this event, which I, I handed you a flyer for, called Love Twin Cities. And this guy came up to me, and he's like, hey, do you remember me? And I'm like, I'm like, no, man. Yeah, I do, yeah. He's like, he's like, he's like, man, I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and I gave my life to God in that Bible study at Reva's house, at that girl's house. Years later, he's out preaching the gospel on the streets, Amen. And so just complete transformation in his life. He encountered God. You know, he's like, man, my life's never been the same. He's like, I was so addicted to drugs and this and that. Isn't God awesome how he moves? Yeah, he's so awesome. And All right, here we go. So I'm at a demonic nightclub. And I'm at this demonic nightclub. And uh, we're there because there's a worship, there's a worship team there. There's a band that actually worships with, uh, with metal music. It's really cool. It's like really like, uh, I don't know if you know metal music, but it's like, rah, yeah, but these guys are like, praise Jesus, you know what I mean? Yeah, and so we're at, I'm at this demonic nightclub, and we're there, and there's, there's all these 
really broken youth there. And I mean, right next door is the gay bar, and there's like all these like cutting and and like suicidal kids, and they're all just in deep darkness. You know, it's like a really. This is a nightclub where like they they like like seriously worship Satan. Like I mean, it's really wild. You know what I mean? Oh, anyway, so we're there, and uh, I'm with my team. I have my team there, and uh, I just begin to pray, and I'm like, God, what do you want to do? Now, here's the key for power evangelism. It's simple. Pray and obey. Pray and obey. All throughout the scriptures, they pray, they worship, God speaks to them, and then they obey. They pray, they worship, God speaks to them, they obey. Amen? That's the key right there. Pray and obey. Worship, he speaks, move, act. You have to act on it, okay? So I'm up in the upper level. I'm up in the, in the balcony, and uh, I'm just like praying. Songs. I'm actually in the bar section, but I'm not drinking because I don't drink. And I'm up there, and I'm just praying, and I'm like, God, what do you want to do? And I hear the Holy Spirit tell me, grab your team right when this band is done. Because the Christian band was about to play. And, and when they played, the, the, the heavenlies completely shifted. Like when, they, when this Christian band named Four Today, they're not a band anymore, but amazing band. But when they played, the, the presence in that, that place went from extremely nasty and demonic to like the heavens just open. And um, the, the Lord said, grab your team right when this is done. Go outside and begin to pray. I said, okay, sounds good. So, team, worship team begins to play, and here we are in a satanic nightclub, and they have this song. They go from like, rah, 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 do, 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 to a song that goes, Holy Spirit, full, breathe your life into us. And keep in mind, the, the crowd, I mean, it's packed room bigger than this. Kids wearing black, drug addicted, broken, just crushed. I mean, on death's edge, you know? And this band just like goes from raw to Holy Spirit, full, breathe your life into us. And here are these people that usually are used to worship, people are also in worshiping God. The heavens open, the presence of God is like in that place. Shows over, God says, Go outside and begin to pray right now. Now is the time. Here's your opportunity. So I rush outside. I'm outside, my team's there, we begin to pray, and we begin to cry out, we begin to say, God, send your fire, Lord, forgive our Bible, God, just touch this group, and five of us, my team, I'm like, with five of the youth I'm working with at the time, we're just praying, and it goes to like 10, and it goes to like 15, people, these, these worldly kids, they start to join us, these, these secular kids start to join us in the circle praying, I'm like, wow, something's interesting here, so we're praying, and the circle's getting bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, someone stands, up on the, uh, someone stands up on a ledge and says, hey, be quiet, blah, 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 blah. And I said, don't listen to him. Keep praying. And all of a sudden, wham, you could feel it. The fire of God hit so strong, and the power of God just breaks out. I'm not kidding you. These kids begin to manifest demons and have visions of God left and right. Boom, 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 boom. Outpouring of the Holy Spirit just hits right there in a outside of a demonic nightclub, like a revival meeting you'd have in these charismatic circles or whatever. Right there, bam, it happens right on the streets. And kids begin to get delivered to demons and begin to have visions of God. I talked to this one young lady uh, who tracked us down after to be baptized. And I said, why are you coming? Why are you driving two hours from Duluth to St. Paul or where I was in Lakeville? Why are you driving so far? to come and be baptized. She said, you don't understand. When you guys prayed for me, she says, I went out of my body and I saw Jesus. She said, I went to church my whole life. They judged me, they criticized me, they condemned me. But, but she said, when you guys prayed for me, I went out of my body and I, I saw Jesus. And she said, I want him. Yeah, wild stuff, wild stuff. And so, I'm, so let's go back to the nightclub. So we're there and it's like, man, people are demons and then some of them are having visions of God. It's like someone just dropped like dynamite and it's just like, you know when you drop dynamite in the ocean, it's like all this, it's like, what do we got here? It's just like all kinds of scenarios, you know? And there's this young man who's manifesting demons, and I'm like just commanding these demons. I mean, the power of God's there, so it's like demons with a word. Commanding these demons, it's like, get out, get out, get out. And he's getting free. He's <coughs> just free, you know? Wild stuff, right? And outside of this demonic nightclub. And uh, this guy's getting free. I'm like, man, this guy looks familiar. And I'm just like, ah, just like praying for this dude's freedom. And he's just like following me around afterwards. Man, it was wild, man. Kids are getting saved. Atheists. I saw on their Facebook wall, it said, they said, they said, I totally didn't believe in God. I hated God. And I didn't, how can you hate someone that doesn't exist? You know what I mean? Hated him. 
and I wanted nothing to do him, and I didn't believe in God whatsoever. But he says, after last night, I'm a Christian. He's real, you know? Like, one after another, these kids just got rocked, you know? And so there's this young man, and he was kind of, like, following me around, and he's, like, he's really interested, you know, just kind of, like, following me and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, I'm like, so what's, you know, what's God, what's your story, man? What God, what, what, what is God doing? And I'm like, man, this guy looks so familiar, man. I'm like, what is this? And uh, he ends up meeting me at my house, and he's like, look, he's like, I'm in the new age. And he's like, I can read people's minds. Like, I know what people are thinking, and it's accurate. Like, I, and he's like, I'm talking to angels, and these angels are telling me things about people. And I looked at him, I said, buddy, I said, I'm going to give you a clue. You're not talking to angels. You're talking to demons. I said, you're hungry for spiritual things, and your heart is authentic, but you're tapped into the wrong source. God wants to give you the real. And I said, if you're willing to give up your demonic power, God will give you. And then what happened is, in the process of this, I realized, wait, you were that kid that I preached to under the gazebo who cussed me out. So he ends up being this kid that I preach to under the gazebo who cusses me out. This is the kid. A year later, ends up getting delivered outside of a nightclub. This dude gives his life to Jesus and gets completely delivered to demons. Completely, like gives up the new age, completely delivered to demons. Absolutely fascinating. And the best thing is he ended up marrying Reva, that girl that went preaching with me. They ended up in the long haul, got cleaned up, moved in with me, got discipled, ends up marrying Reva. How cool is that, man? That's so cool. So, okay, why do I tell that story? The key to power evangelism is hearing the voice of God. Is prayer is the first key, amen? That's like A number one. You have to hear and just obey. And um, I want to keep it simple for you. You guys like scriptures? I like scriptures. Yeah. I've been just going on like prophetic stuff, but let me give you some good scriptures here. I'm actually a Baptocostal. <laughs> I grew up Baptist, but I'm also Pentecostal. So I'm Baptist and Pentecostal. I'm Baptocostal. I'm going to give you a scripture. Uh, David talked about it last night. Luke 3.16. John the Baptist was called the way for Jesus. And in preparing the way for Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So he prepared the way to say, This is the Messiah. This is the Christ. This is the one who's going to die for your sins. This is the one who's going to be resurrected. This is the one that the Jews have been praying for for, for thousands of years or hundreds of years or however long. It was so long. John the Baptist said, This is the one. But he also said about this Jesus, he said, About Jesus, he said, He's the one that will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. So the two main things that John the Baptist did in preparing people for the Christ was to prepare for their atonement that that this this would be the lamb of god that would take away this this is the one that can forgive your sins this is the messiah that you've been dreaming the jewish people to this day i'm about to go to israel guys tomorrow i'm flying to israel tomorrow i'm flying to israel they're still praying three times a day for their messiah oh talk about you want to feel about be, being impregnated with the heart of god feeling the heart of god do you know how much my heart breaks when i'm in the and i see them crying out for the messiah that has already came it drives me nuts. But I'll tell you, they're starting to receive Jesus left and right. I'm seeing it. It's wild. The, the encounters when I go to Israel, wilder than any country I go to. Right when I step foot in Israel, it's like instant awakening, and God says, it's time to go to business. And it's, it's beautiful. Seeing a Jew receive their Messiah that they've dreamed of for thousands of years, they've prayed of three times a day, for them to realize, wow, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus is their Messiah. Jesus is is the one they're longing for. Oh, man, it is so fun. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And so John the Baptist was saying, look, this, this Jesus is going to atone for your sins. And he's saying, this guy is also going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. So you need to highlight that in your Bible. And you need to do some word studies. Be a good Berean. Be a good Baptist on me. And you need to find out what that baptism of fire is. Because once you find out what that baptism of fire is, your evangelism will go to the the key, when I evangelize, the key of, you know, what, what happened, you know, with, with this young man, the key of what happens wherever I go in evangelism, look, I'm a horrible, I'll tell you right now, friends, I'm a horrible evangelist, horrible evangelist. I, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm this, I'm that, but when the Holy Spirit comes on me, when, when the Holy Spirit's power and fire comes on me, I'm 
bold as a lion. When the power of God comes on me, I'm courageous. I'm fearless. I'm absolutely fearless. God does it through me. Amen? When, okay, we're going to go into another scripture. Go to, um, or should I take you now? Luke 24, 49. Jesus was to ascend. And Jesus' last words wasn't go. Did you know that? His last words wasn't go. I believe in the go. Go into all the world. It's in, like, every one of the Gospels, there's a great commission. If you look for it, go into all the world. Go, go, go. Jesus' last words was stay. Who said it? Raise your hand. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> Bless you, brother. Jesus' last words was stay in the city Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And when that power falls, you will be, let's go to Acts 1.8 now. That's Luke 24, 49. It says, uh, Luke 24, 49 says, stay in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Now, Luke is the same author of the book of Acts. Flip to the book of Acts, Acts 1, verse 8. And then it's the same talk, same author, different books, same talk. This is like right into the, this, the same talk, red letters, ascension moment, Acts 1, 8. He says, Jesus, right here, red letters. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So, my friends, what is the key to evangelism? Being filled with the power of God. And I love the prayer movement. You know, I love the tabernacle of David, day and night, day and night, worshiping, praying. You know, the thing about David is he didn't just stay in the tabernacle. David was an artist. David was a politician. David was a family man. David was so many different things. He's a musician. We can't just stay in the tabernacle. And I think that's one thing that's killed the charismatic movement and the things that's killed a lot of the revivals is the power, the power falls and then we shake and we just roll around, Right? obey Jesus. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, the power comes upon us, we have to go. Amen? And I gave you guys a sheet. Do you guys still have your sheet? We're almost done. You guys have been so hungry. Thank you guys for your tentativeness. That's something we do called Love Twin Cities. What we do in the Twin Cities, and they're doing this all over the United States, but it's a movement that does, what we'll do is We'll take 10 days and we'll pray together. Like we'll build a wall of continual prayer night and day for 10 days. But then in there, we will schedule evangelism slots where every three hours we will, we will launch evangelists to go out and preach the gospel. So it's the convergence of the prayer movement and the missions movement together, right? And you realize that as a believer, as you begin to share your faith and you begin to witness, there is a, there is a, there's an itch in your spirit, whether you know it or not, when you faith, you're going to go to the next level as a Christian. Amen? Your passion for Jesus is going to go to the next level. Like the Bible says about the disciples, that they were filled with joy in the Holy Spirit after going out. There is a joy that comes. Our primary joy comes from his presence, from him. Amen? But there is a joy that comes when you release your faith. There is a joy that comes when you see souls. You know, like uh, we've got mamas in here. Like we have this beautiful family over here. But I mean, just look at the joy on, on the faith, you know, on the face of, you know, a couple like this. I mean, just look at that. Baby joy. You know, we need baby joy in the body of Christ. We need to see souls come in, and there's a joy. You know, like when, when uh, there's a mama or a when, when, when the baby comes, it's just there's so much joy in the house. No babies, no joy. You know, it's like there's something missing. But when, when the body of Christ is seeing people come, it's amazing. And so this Love Twin Cities thing is, is, is something we do. I, I invite you. You all can come to this. Just come to the Twin Cities. It's, there's, a, there's a website where you can get info on it. Um, just feel free to, like, go to that website. Uh, I have to leave after that, so you can't really... I have to leave right after this, so you can't really fill out that form and give it to me. But you can go on that website and get information. But I believe God wants to do a love Sioux Falls. I believe God wants to do this in your guys' cities, right? I love Huron or whatever. God wants to do this here where there's continual... Because you guys have prayer going, Right? But God wants to get evangelism going as well. Amen? And I want to tell you a story of uh, how this works, right? So I was at a, uh, it's called Messenger Boot Camp. It's a training they do to get people ready for Love Twin Cities and evangelism, to like grow in their evangelism. And so I'm there and, and, and I walk. You ever got 
back into the room and you just feel the presence of God and you're just like, oh, I'm in the holy presence of God, amen? She, back there, she's got it. She totally got it. Yeah. So I walk in and I'm like, oh, I'm sensitive to the Lord, you know? Like when I walk into like a satanic nightclub, like sometimes in, in Jerusalem or whatever nation I, I walk in, I walk into a store and I'm just like, ooh, or a Uganda or wherever, Brazil, wherever I'm at, I walk in, I'm like, ugh. And then you find out there's like Satanism or there's a demonic shrine or something there. I'm sensitive to the spirit, spiritual climate because I'm in the presence of God a lot, amen? And so anyways, I walk into this church and I'm like, oh, we're about to do training for evangelism. I'm like, oh, hey, hey, hey. I'm so sensitive to it. He's my friend, you know? And I'm like, oh, it's going to get good. I don't know what's going to happen. And so we're there, and the leader says, that's it. The Holy Spirit hits the worship. is just like, Wah! everyone's just like undone. Wow. And the, and the leader says, that's it. We're launching out, and we're going to go evangelize right now. We're emptying the building. I'm just like, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has left the building. Like God, seriously, our churches have become country clubs. Churches were never meant to be country clubs. They were meant to be war bases. You were never meant to come and be comfortable. And this and that, you know. It is a medical place. You come get healed up and you go right back out to battle. Amen? It's a war base. It's supposed to launch you into evangelism. It's supposed to launch you into a life of bringing the kingdom in every sphere at your workplace, in your family, you know, whatever. That's what the church is supposed to be. Amen? So I come in and I'm like, ooh, this is going to be good. And uh, he launches us out, and he says, go two by two. And we, so we go out, and that he said, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to who he wants you to lead you to get a word of knowledge, like have the Lord show you. So here's that prayer thing, right? Okay, so we're praying, and we're on the way, and I'm driving with my partner. And I'm driving with my partner and uh, this, this evangelism partner, and I'm like, I'm asking that God sends us the worst kids in this mall. I want the roughest people in this We're about to go to the mall. We're like, oh. And so we're on our way, and I said, I said, I want the roughest. We're praying. God, send us the roughest ones, the ragtags, the tattoos, the whatevers. And so we walk in, and right when we walk in the mall, these kids walk by us. This guy has a mohawk up to here, tattoos up to here, piercings here. They look rough, buddy. And they're got like short pink hair, hat backwards, whatever, and another dude that just looks rough. And I'm in my flesh, I'm scared of them. I'm like, I don't want to talk to these people. But like, you know, my spirit, I'm like, that's the one. <laughs> And so I looked at my partner, Ben, and I'm like, Ben, we're going in. We're like, try not to stalk them because they're like, here they are. And we're like, wee, wee, wee. finally, they land in the food court. They land in the food court. And I go, perfect. The birds have landed. Yes. And so I come up to him, and Ben's like nervous. And I'm like, all right, just go. But we're so full. Look, we are, we are so full of the Shekinah glory of God right now. We are so full. You know, it says in the, in the early church that says they realized that the early apostles were uneducated untrained men but they realized they had been with jesus the marker of evangelism in the book of acts is boldness it says they had boldness they boldly preached and where did that boldness come from it came from being filled with the holy spirit and where does being filled with the holy spirit come from singing to one another in psalms hymns and spiritual songs but the is, is we get full and we go home and we keep it all to ourselves we're selfish in our faith and that's why we're, our Christianity is dead and boring. is because we're not being obedient to the Great Commission. He said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples. If we're not doing that, we're being disobedient. Amen? Ha! Okay, so I'm there. I'm at the I approach these kids, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. And I start talking to them. I'm like, hey, what's up? And they're like, what's up, man? And I'm like, hey. And I'm talking to them. And I'm like, hey, I just want to let you know that God loves you. And uh, I want to share my story with you. And I said, I used to be on drugs. I used to be broken. I used to be this. I used to be that. But God got a hold of me. And they're like, yeah, 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 you know, whatever. And he looks at me. This dude with the Mohawk, he looks at me. And he's like, oh, yeah? He's like, I've spent half my life in jail. He said, see this mark right here? See this mark right here? Someone stabbed me in the neck. Yeah. And he's like, my life, I've been in and out of addiction my whole life. Yeah, that's my life. And I'm like, I want to tell you right now, God loves you. And I'm telling you, I serve the living God. I'm full of boldness right now, man. I'm burning. You know when you're in the presence of God and you feel like your hands are on fire, your face is shining like Moses, you know? It's just like, ah, that's the key right there. You want to evangelize. This is, I know this. I think I didn't even talk about evangelism. That's the key to evangelism right there. Get filled, out, filled up and leak it out. It's simple. Just let it flow. It's in you. Let it out. And I look at him, I tell you, I said, I'm, I'm going to tell you, man, the God I serve is alive. I'm telling you, I'm here, not because God is dead. I don't serve a dead God. I'm telling you right now, my God, 
is alive. And I serve a living God. And he's just like, whoa, what is this guy? He's like, this guy's crazy, you know? And I'm just telling him about this and that, blah, 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 the gospel, give scriptures. The Holy Spirit just gives you what to say. I'm not going to give you a pattern. Hey, do this little thing and that thing. I love patterns or whatever. Just go with the Holy Ghost. What is the Spirit giving you to minister to their hearts? You know what I mean? And uh, the one dude's just got demons, and he's like, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. And this is the sister, the brother of the sister in the middle. And he's like, I just got to get out. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Before you go, I said, before you go, can we pray? They're like, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm like, let's hold hands. <laughs> Put that picture there. Please, the next picture. Should be a picture of the kids. Someone got this on their phone. I said, let's hold hands, and we're going to pray. I begin to pray. I begin to call upon the name, the fire of God's on me. I begin to pray. And when I'm there on that circle, power evangelism, when I'm there, the power of the Holy Spirit, whap, it hits right across the room. That girl, that girl with the hat right there, you can see her right there. She's getting rocked. These kids are not church. They're not in the charismatic movement, any of that stuff. She begins to shake uncontrollably under the presence and the power of God. She begins to shake uncontrollably. And I'm like, what's happening right now? She's like, I can't, I can't, I can't express it. I can't. I'm like, is it good? She's yeah, it's amazing. I said, I said, can I pray for more? She's like, and her head's on the table shaking like this. Seriously, she can't win from this, and then she's on the table shaking like this. And I look at the one guy who wanted to leave, and he's got fear in his eyes. And I'm like, I got you right where I want you now. Yeah, and I'm looking at her, and I said, I said, can I pray for more? She's like, I can't take, I can't take anymore, I can't take anymore. And I said this, I said, if God is this good, is, is it better than drugs? She said, yeah. I said, is it better than any sin? She's like, yeah. I said, if God is this good, would you surrender your life to him right now? Give him your everything. Give up all sin. Give up everything. She said, absolutely. And I led her to the Lord. Bam, right there. And I looked at the other two, and they were just freaked, man. Freaked out, man. Freaked out. And she just gets born again right there. This is power evangelism. It's simple. Get filled up. Leak it out. Simple. Love people. Get filled with the fire. Jesus said this, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witness. He said, how, he says, I've come to baptize the earth and how, with fire. He's, Jesus said it. I don't know what the scripture verse is. He said, I've come to baptize the earth with fire, and how I wish that fire was already kindled. Jesus came to baptize you with fire. Amen? Let's stand. Man, that was a crazy session. I'm going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> I gave you everything I got. Hallelujah. I welcome you guys all to come to Love Twin Cities as a part of this region. Go to that website, sign up. It's, there's, I don't know. I don't even think there's a cost to it. Just come, and there's evangelism training. They'll train you in evangelism. Come and encounter this because God's. this is the missions movement. The missions movement is, the mis missions movement is converging with the prayer movement. Amen. We're going to pray. Let's go ahead and lift your hands. And what I want you to do is just ask God to come and baptize you in the Holy Spirit. In Acts 13, it says they prayed, they ministered to the Lord. It says, then the Lord said, separate for me Paul and Barnabas for the mission I have for them. They prayed, the Holy Spirit spoke, and then they went. And so I'm just going to allow you, I don't know, background music or something back there, thank you. I'm just going to allow you just to ask God for a fresh fire, and then tell him in your heart, with that fresh fire, I'm going to take it to a lost and dying world. I'm going to take that fire, wherever you say I will go, and just go. Just ask him. Say, Lord, baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Just ask him for a fresh and filling. If you're hungry, just ask for more of his presence. God, we ask for glory evangelism. I call this glory, it's power evangelism, but I call it glory, glory evangelism.
And you know, in the book of Acts, when they waited, they literally waited 10 days. They waited 10 days until the fire fell. And when it did, 3,000 people got saved. There's no fast food Christianity. Jesus, have your way. God, give us boldness, Lord. God, give us boldness. God, give us boldness. Lord, give us your presence, Lord. God, we want to share our faith, God. But we've been afraid, Lord. We've been afraid to share our faith. We've been afraid, God. We've been limited, God. Jesus. We don't want to be ashamed anymore. We don't want to be afraid anymore, Lord. afresh God we ask for courage 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 God we ask for courage we ask for courage Keep waiting. Just keep waiting. Just reach. Just reach. Just draw his presence. Just draw close to God. He says he will draw close to you. Just draw close. Draw close. Holy 
Spirit fall on us. Holy Spirit, who did I say? Holy Spirit fall on us right now. Let's stir ourselves up in our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. left but if you're really hungry for this I just want to invite you to just come up here and we're just going to cry out for a few more minutes we're just going to allow the Lord to clothe us he said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and wait in the city Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high so if you're absolutely desperate for another fire baptism just come up here I'm not going to pray for you but the Lord you know I'm pen- no one prayed for anyone. The fire just fell, amen? And uh, we're just, we're just going to cry out. We're just going to ask God for a new fire, a new awakening. Oh, God, I can feel it. I can feel it. It's here. Just cry out. Just cry out. Just ask fire. for it. Lord, a new fire, a new fire, Lord, give it to us. 
Lord, we're asking, teach us to learn, long for it, yearn for it. God, we're asking for it, new boldness, new fire, new passion, a new zeal, a new boldness, God. Oh, God, a new confidence, Lord. A new authority, a new surrender. God, we lay our idols down. Every distraction, TV, distractions, the world, entertainment, whatever it is, sin, compromise, pride, hardness of heart, anything. Lord, we lay it down right now at this altar. We lay it down. Without a sacrifice, there is no fire. Without a sacrifice, there is no fire. Whatever it is in your heart, lay it down. Lay it at the altar and let this fire come upon you. China they gather together like this when they send their missionaries out and they wait for the Holy Spirit to fall and they weep and they weep and they weep and in the middle of the night they send their missionaries out all over I've seen videos of it where they go all over and they know that they'll never see their friends again they know that the ones they're releasing are gonna end up in jail they're gonna end up dead they're gonna end up in some unknown providence so they're weeping and they, and they send out the missionaries. There's such a high price. And when I was in Israel, I, I met a woman who had spent 30 years in the underground church in China. She's 80 years old. She's radiant. Her name's Elizabeth, beautiful woman of God. She'd spent 30 years in prison for sharing our faith. God, we ask that you would give us the surrender and the willingness to say, like Isaiah, here am I. Send me, Lord. Lord, it's going to cost me my flesh. It's going to cost me vulnerable. It's going to cost me being rejected. I'm, people are going to reject. Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Lord, let your fire come upon us. Let your spirit come upon us. And clothe us with power from on high. Fill us with the Holy Spirit and fire baptize us in the Holy Spirit and fire before your almighty throne, before the throne room of God. Fill us afresh. Baptize us afresh. No more striving. It's your power upon us to be a witness. And God, we say, here we are. Send me. Here I am. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I'm broken. I'm weak. I'm afraid. I'm insecure. But Lord, with you, I can do all things. All things are possible with you. Nothing is impossible. Without you, we can do nothing. But with you, we can do all things. So Lord, we just lay our heart at your altar. Lord, we want to be in love with you. We pray out of that love relationship, we would go and we would bear fruit in this nation and the nations and our family. Lord, we want to be in love with you. And we want to bear fruit for your glory. Lord, you said in this, you are glorified that we bear fruit and fruit that remains. We just thank you that that fruit comes as we abide in you. Fill us with your fire. Fill us with your Glorify your name. In Jesus' name. 
you're welcome just to sit, sit here and wait on the Lord. Um, we're going to officially end this session. You're free to go out for, for dinner. The Lord is, I mean, for me, I begin to feel the fire. It's just like a little tingling, and it's like you don't want to rush when the presence of God is touching you. You don't, you don't want to rush. And so if God is touching you, feel free to just to wait on him and just allow him to do work and to fill you and clothe you and empower you and baptize you. You know, baptism is a soaking process. Allow him just to soak you in his love and his power and his fire. And allow him to speak to you. He'll put someone on your heart. He'll put a neighborhood. He'll put a people group. He'll put a nation. He'll put a friend. He'll put a person. He'll put people. He'll, when in this time, this is a whole he will put people on your heart and then just say, God, I'm weak, but with you, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. In you, I'm bold as a, he says, the righteous are as bold as a lion. The power of the Holy Spirit will give you the ability to witness. So we seal this right now. We seal these warriors. We seal these messengers. We seal, we seal these ones with your fire and your glory. We seal them, Lord. I'm asking that you would just continue to encounter them, continue to pour out on them, continue to open up the heavens over them, continue to speak to them. Pray that, it wouldn't, that Lord, that it would just be free to receive from you, Lord, a new anointing, a new fire, a new glory, a new courage, a new faith a new love, words of knowledge, gifts of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Let them activate in every one of these. Let the heavens open up over them, and I pray that everywhere they go, the kingdom would fall, and the devil, Lord, would just get smoked out, that your name would be glorified, captives would be set free, as would happen. Lord, we pray, seal this time, this sacred time, we seal it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Never burn up the fire on the altar. 